Okay, you've got a parade of little lambs who've been rejected by their moms, and you've got a giant bunny who's got no company because she's so darn huge. So what do you do? Uh, you put them together and see if they get along. Here at Ockingarrick Wildlife Centre in Scotland, this odd family just works. You're probably wondering how this all came to be. Well, first things first. What's the deal with the sweaters? They wear little jumpers in the winter time, and even in February we have to have them with jumpers on because it's quite cold even though we've got a heat lamp inside. That makes sense. Without a mom, the lambs go without milk and warmth. And without milk and warmth, well, they wouldn't survive. At their age, they need to be fed about five times a day. The warmth of this barn here will do. And as you can see, they've got food coming their way too. But a mother's love is something every kid needs. What'll these precious little lambs do? Well, that's where Millie comes in. Ever seen a bunny this big? Millie's what's known as a giant continental rabbit. And you can clearly see why. She's bigger than the domestic rabbits that we have. She hasn't got the same companionship as the other rabbits in here because we don't have anything her size. The other rabbits, they've got burrows and things. The Millie's too big to be there with them. So she's just been on her own. When you weigh in at around 50 pounds, like eight times the size of an average rabbit, it's kind of hard to fit in. And being without friends and companions breeds stress for rabbits. Hello, are you here to see Millie? Knowing her bunny needed pals, Maxine decided to let Millie roam around outside her pen one day. The other residents caught wind of this development and wasted no time. When the lambs came, it was just so unusual to see. They were all racing around together and then we'd have a little rest and lie down together and a little bit of grooming and then they would move on and have another race. Millie really seemed to want to be with them. I think she takes them on as her little babies and wants to look after them. Unconditional love at first sight. And from that day onward, they've spent every day together. The kids can be a handful, but Millie doesn't seem bothered by them. Ever since the lambs stormed their way into her world, she's no longer alone. I'm so pleased that we did let her out beside them because she's really been enjoying life since the lambs came along and getting lots of exercise as well, haven't you, Millie? With the cold months behind them, the sweaters will soon be gone. But at least now, everyone will finally be warm. It's well known that joeys make good friends. How you doing? Leave two toddlers in a room together and they'll usually find enough in common to get along. These kangaroo and wombat joeys are no different. Bet you'd never guess their origin stories have very similar beginnings. Let's start with Buggy. Buggy is a very, very sweet kangaroo. He's been very sweet from day one. This eastern grey kangaroo was found by golfers on a golf course, cowering next to his dead mother. They picked him up in their golf buggy, which is where he got his name, and called for help. We went there and picked up Buggy, and he was the cutest little fella. He was in really good shape. He didn't hiss at us in any way, which a lot of roos do. Without a mom and only about eight months old at the time, Buggy needed round-the-clock monitoring and a warm pouch to sleep. His thick adult fur hadn't grown in yet, and without help, he never would have made it. So, Holly and Grant came up with a makeshift pouch as a substitute. Here we go. Got your milk ready. Here we go. Hop in. That's it. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, you're hungry, aren't you? That's it? That's all you're going to drink today, huh? It's only been three months, but he's already packing on the pounds. In the past month alone, he tacked on 12 pounds. Four bottles of milk a day for a growing boy will do that. He needs all that sustenance to grow and to hop around the joint, as kangaroos are known to do. 
Buggy had it made, but before long, he had to share his crib with Wally. About seven months ago, Holly and Grant spotted a dead wombat by the side of the road. And inside her pouch was Wally. Well, I initially got out of the car and I could see his little feet moving around in the pouch. Um, once we cut him out, you could tell he was in good condition. Look at him, he's so sweet. <laughs> he didn't seem in injured, so we took him to a local wildlife carer who could give us some wombat milk. Holly and Grant gave Wally a second chance. But would Buggy be on board? At first, not so much. With time, Buggy got attached to Wally and wouldn't let go, literally. Buggy, for some reason, likes to just hang off Wally and suck his ears. He likes to sit and he will suck all day. So maybe it's just having something nearby <laughs> that's easy to suck. I think it's a comfort thing. You know, when they're in their mother's pouch, they're obviously always on the teat, always sucking that as well. In the absence of that, they take whatever's the nearest thing and that's their thumb or their, their tail. Or in Buggy's case, it's Wally's ear. Inside their cute little nursery, the Joeys each have their own pouch to rest in. But they've become so close, they'd rather dream together. But we kept on noticing that uh, Wally would always get into the same bag that Buggy was in. It doesn't matter what I do, I can walk away for two seconds, I come back and either Buggy's in Wally's pouch or Wally's in Buggy's pouch and it's continual all day. It's a comfort thing for both of them because Buggy would still be in and out of his mum's pouch. Uh, Wally would still be waddling side by side with his mum. So to have them both together, I think it's mainly comfort and they really enjoy each other's company, which is beautiful. Beautiful, yes, but also a tight tweeze. I have to check on them quite regularly and make sure that someone's not squashing someone else. Eventually, they'll each be ready to be released back into the wild. So they've got Thank to get the hang of life outdoors. Come on. That's it. We'll just take him for a little walk so he can um, get used to hopping. Until that day comes, the company they keep will keep them warm. Nice to see things are looking up down under. <laughs>